guys, Miranda, and today I'm here to react to episode 3 of Exandria Unlimited. And this was, guys, finally the shopping episode! Ode, ode, ode. Except JK, because it really wasn't even all that long. I know some people don't like the shopping episodes, but I've said before I actually kind of like them, because I feel like it's when you can see the, first of all, they get new gear, which is freaking awesome, but it's when you can see, like, the personalities start to shine more, too. They all pretty much love shopping, but I mean, like, you know, with, like, Travis, when he plays how he hates shopping, and, like, that just comes out, and I remember when Floyd was like, can I just get a coat? When they were all, like, doing elaborate, like, winter outfits, he was like, a coat's good for me. So I feel like you can really see, like, their personality shine, and, like, Opal getting, like, a little cute pink coat and just like contributing more to her aesthetic was really cute. Dariax running around like a kid in a candy shop like grabbing things and then getting the wrong amount of money like giving her the wrong amount of money. <sighs> Dariax was a trip this episode can I just tell you so much how much I loved him. He literally exudes himbo energy. I just I could go on for days about how much I love him. This was also the big thing with this episode was getting to see Gilmore, who I said in my episode 2 review that I have not actually watched campaign 1, so I've never actually seen Gilmore outside of like, like I know his gist because I read like the Critical Role book and they talked about him and I've seen compilations with him and stuff, so I know like who he is, who he was to Vax, who he was to Vox Machina, stuff like that, but this was like I feel like the excitement that everyone else had wasn't up to par with what mine was. It would be like that if like they were meeting Puma because I would be like, oh my gosh, I love Puma. I love Puma. I don't know who that is, blah, blah, blah. But like, it was just really cool because this was like my first introduction to Gilmore officially. And I was really curious last time I had said if Matt was going to step in and play or if Abria was going to play Gilmore. And she did. And I think it was very interesting, but like weird that like there's a character who's only played by a certain person and that person's there, but they're not playing the character. Like, I don't think she did a bad job at all. I just mean it's like weird. It's like, it, like your sibling wearing your glasses for a day or something like that, you know? Like it's not bad necessarily, it just isn't what you're used to, so it feels strange. But it was awesome seeing Gilmore again. He's married now, which I don't, I didn't recognize his husband's name and then most people on Twitter when I tried to look it up also didn't know who that was. So it'll be interesting to see if maybe that comes up, but I'm feeling like she must have gone over with Matt kind of like confirm stuff of like, you know, this is what he'd do, this is how he'd act, but then also maybe she just watched a bunch of episodes to kind of get down his mannerisms and stuff like that, because I feel like she, like, no one's gonna watch that and be like, oh, that's not Gilmore. Like, she did a really good job with it, and it was really funny, and I love seeing him interact with the gang, because, I mean, they are, I don't know, we never saw him interact with Mighty Nine, so that would be interesting to see, but like, this gang, which I don't think they actually have a name yet, do they? Like, they should come up with a name soon, but they just exude so much chaotic energy and Gilmore feeds off chaotic energy I feel like so it was kind of a perfect match like I love how everyone was so in love with him especially Opal like he's just in love with everyone but Opal was like following him around holding his hand like it was just really really cute and then I feel like they did get some really good things with the shopping done which was awesome because I feel like a thing that we've said before is I feel like we haven't seen them we've seen them in combat but we haven't seen them like really beef up and buff up. And I feel like this is the first time where they've gotten a chance to do that, where they got new cool weapons, they got some enchantments and attunements. And I feel like now they're maybe on a better footing to do whatever they're going to do. They also got kind of their next mission from Gilmore, which was to try and figure out more of what this sigil that they had found carved into the meza that just like came out of nowhere men. So now their next mission next episode is going to be to try and find a better piece of translation I think is how I understood it so that he can figure out what exactly this means and they know where it came from but like where it came from in terms of the meza and like why this is happening now and why exactly it's happening in the fire shari and things like that. So I think next episode is going to be cool because I do like that they're not just like on the run like they're not afraid at all of Pashka like they're afraid but like they're not afraid afraid which is cool because I feel like it fits in with the characters that they really don't always make the smartest decisions or the most like logical and well thought out they're very impulsive but I think that makes for great storytelling and like it fits in well with their characters the only weird thing that I'm like kind of freaked out by is why Dorian is so reluctant to part with the circlet because I, I feel like giving it to Gilmore would have been really good even though apparently Gilmore would have been killed but I feel like it was a really like good idea to get this thing that's clearly affecting a lot of people like Opal's having visions, Orm and Dorian are the ones that throw up if they get near it like when he was like oh I'll take it from you and I'll give you I think it was like 5,000 gold or something like that I was like oh that sounds like a really good deal like do that and then you don't have to worry about Pasca coming after you anymore because like 
well, she might still come after you and kill you for stealing it, but I feel like it was kind of one less thing to worry about in a sense. And they, and Dorian was the one that was really like, no, I want to keep it. I think it's important. But I'm like, why? Because I feel like it's like, it almost feels metagaming where it's like Robbie knows this is important, right? Like Robbie knows that like in a game when you get something like this, you don't want to let go because it's got a big bargaining like piece to it and stuff like that. And it's important. But I feel like from what we've got of Dorian, I don't think he would want to keep, especially if it's making him sick, like I feel like he'd want to get rid of it as quickly and as best as he could. So that's why I'm also wondering, is there something more to Dorian that we're not knowing? Because, you know, why is he so reluctant? This isn't the first time he's been like, I don't want to give this crown away, I want to keep it with us. And I'm just like, why? Because <laughs> again, I get why, but all the reasons that I can think of are like, metagaming reasons like there's nothing they can do with that circlet like no one's gonna wear it hopefully well Dariax is like two steps away from wearing it but I mean no one's gonna wear it they're not giving it back to the spider queen it's supposed to go to someone technically who's gonna study it and I just feel like what more do you have with this other than it putting yourself in danger so that's why I'm kind of like side-eyeing Dorian right now I'm like what why do you seem like you have more because he's so he defers to the group in so many other situations that for him to like put his foot down and be like no we're keeping this I feel like is just so suspicious and Fern I think also wanted to keep it so I don't want to be like oh he's the only one that wants to keep it and I really I don't get why she wanted to keep it either the only people that I could see wanting to keep it are Dariax because he like would be like oh no we'll trade it for something better like than 5,000 and I could also see Opal since she had the vision being like maybe like attuned to it or something actually Opal and Dariax could both be attuned to it since his eyes are still black as night and I think it was so funny when Gilmore was like they were like can you heal his eyes and he was like yeah if you promise never to touch the box again or the crown again and he was like yeah I promise and like they absolutely did not oh my gosh when he almost like he just kept touching it and Dariax is just so oh my gosh I love the man so much and I think the most Banff moment he had was at the end which the end whole thing with Poshka was so like oh Poshka is very more dangerous than they realize, and I think we initially realized, she's not really like a messenger or like a low or like a middleman. She is the like high one up there in her Carmen San Diego outfit that sticks out like a sore thumb. And when she was able to take over their carriage and be like, I can hear what you guys are saying, like she's very scary. And I love that they were able to trick her though with the charm. Like I was so nervous when she cast charm person because I was like oh what if it doesn't work like she's gonna know you tried to charm her and this is just gonna go super sideways but then it worked thankfully when the charm wore off and they were trying to say that like Gilmore had the circlet and the residual like they gave it to him and she was like blah, 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 and believe them because their deception was really good and then at the end my favorite Dariax move was when he stuck his hand out the carriage with the circular and was like gotcha Poshka like it's just such a him move because it's also so stupid <laughs> like it's amazing but it's stupid to be like she believed that like you didn't have it and you were in the clear for a little bit like she's still gonna come after you for like besting her and stuff like that like it's a pride thing now at this point but I feel like they got away and then he was like Boo, which is like so not the smart move so but so the petty move that we all love and know and I really really liked that because I was just like yeah stick it to Poshka like this girl showed up at their townhouse that they were renting and she came on to them and she made them steal something and then when they stole it and they decided to keep it she freaked out like maybe vet the people that you like go after better you know Poshka like you're not the end-all be-all so I feel like she's definitely shaping up to be the big bad but I also don't know I feel like she's going to but I just don't know how connect to what's going on with the sigil and all that because I feel like it's only eight episodes so to have two big bads would be kind of confusing I feel like the stories are going to intersect probably better and there's obviously more that Poshka like, she has a bigger plan in motion if, like, she was willing to steal this circlet and kill all these people to do it and, you know, has a lot more followers than I think we anticipated if she had 25 people just for that carriage to hold them up. So I'm really, really excited to see, like, what that's gonna be because I feel like all their confrontations right now have been kind of run away, which is very, very smart, you know, because they're outnumbered and they don't really fully know Poshka's whole deal. So it's actually pretty smart to run away, <laughs> but I just feel like that it's gonna lead to something where like if the charm doesn't work or if their magic fails them or something like that like it, it would also help I, we don't know what class she is right because I don't know if she she can cast spells right so she must be some kind of spell caster um which is concerning because <laughs> they're usually like if she's a wizard 
they're screwed. But it's just going to be interesting now that they're on another mission because I feel like their last mission with the fire shower last episode, the thing that I said kind of bugged me was like nothing really happened. <laughs> like they didn't get a super amount of answers or stuff like that. They definitely got them from Gilmore, which was awesome. Like he told them everything about the circulate, who it was going to, like it was like you can keep it if you want, like I'll take it, whatever you want to do. And now they kind of have another ally who is somewhat powerful. I know Poshka was like, oh, I don't care that he's on the council. He thinks he's untouchable, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, it is still Gilmore. They're not going to kill him off <laughs> in an eight episode arc after everyone loves him, you know, and he obviously has very influential power, whether Posca wants to believe that she can best it or not is up to her, but I'm, I'm on Gilmore's side. So if you have seen this episode, please feel free to leave your thoughts down in the comments. Also make sure to video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time. Bye.